Hello viewers, today we will discuss the another pharmacokinetic parameter that is the plasma half-life of a drug and the learning objectives of uh, this session that by the end of this session uh, you will be able to understand and discuss the plasma half-life of a drug that what is the plasma half-life and the second object is the clinical importance of plasma half-life and then how to calculate the plasma half-life that will be able to calculate the plasma half-life of a drug and finally you will be able to discuss the steady state concentration and what is the clinical importance of steady state concentration now the plasma half-life actually uh, the unit for the life is time so when we are talking about the plasma half-life it means it is a time required for the amount or the concentration of a drug falls to 50 percent in a systemic circulation and when uh, we anybody is asking about the plasma half-life is a very common mistake done by our students that they said so it is a concentration of a drug so plasma half-life is not the concentration of a drug it is the time required by the drug for the amount or the concentration falls to the 50 percent in the systemic circulation and these uh, two that is the volume of distribution and the clearance they are the two basic predictors of plasma half-life the volume of distribution is directly proportional to the plasma half-life if the more the volume of distribution the plasma half-life will be high and if the narrows the volume of distribution the plasma half-life will be very less and the situation is reverse in case of clearance of the drug that clearance is indirectly proportional to a plasma half-life more the clearance less the plasma half-life and less the clearance more the plasma half-life so these are the two basic uh, predictors uh, for the uh, plasma half-life but clinically it is not true that when a drug decreases the clearance or when the clearance of a drug is decreased by any clinical condition or the disease then it affects the plasma half-life for example if we use the lidocaine in congestive cardiac failure it doesn't only decreases the clearance but it also decreases the volume of distribution of the lidocaine so the net effect of this plasma half-life is very uh, negligible and in case of digoxin when we use the digoxin in chronic renal failure it doesn't only the uh, decreases the volume of decrease uh, volume of distribution but it also decreases the clearance of the drug so the net effect of the plasma half-life is not as great as might be predicted based on the changes in the renal function so we can say that the plasma half-life is constant is constant and it could not be changed in certain if we plot a graph that is a time and concentration graph that is this is the concentration of the drug this is the concentration of the drug and this is the half-life for example the plasma half-life of a drug is one hour and if we administer the drug through intravenous route of administration it reaches the systemic circulation and then this is the time concentration graph this is the absorption of the drug 
this portion of this graph is called as the alpha phase or the distribution phase where the drug distributed from the systemic circulation to the peripheral tissues and this portion of the graph is called as the beta phase of the graph or the elimination phase where the drug get eliminated out. So we can see over here that this is the first half life the drug decreases by the 50 percent this is the another half life another 50 percent 50 percent and finally the 50 percent. So we can say that this plasma half life obeys or follows the first order elimination kinetics and what is the first order elimination kinetics that is the constant fraction or the percentage of the drug is eliminated out per unit time. So this is the, the first order elimination, first order elimination kinetics. So the half life is constant regardless of the concentration of a drug. This is the second mistake what commonly the students do and assume that if we increase the concentration of the drug, the plasma half-life will be increased. Most of the drugs, they follow the first order elimination kinetics. That is, the constant fraction of the drug is eliminated out per unit time. In this situation, the plasma half-life is constant. Very few drugs like uh, aspirin, when we administer the aspirin in a similar dosages, it follows the first order elimination kinetics. But if we increase the dose of the aspirin, so it first follows the zero order elimination and then it obeys the first order elimination. So in this situation, the plasma half-life will be more when the dose of the drug changes from smaller to the larger dose. So this is the now very few drugs which uh, uh, change the uh, kinetics of elimination from zero to first order. Otherwise, the plasma half-life is constant. It is not related with the concentration or the dose of the drug. Now question arises that what is the clinical importance of plasma half-life? Plasma half-life desire to design the dosage regimen and it is the indicator of steady state concentration. Now what is the steady state concentration? A steady state concentration is that state in which the concentration of a drug is in a steady state or steady level that the dose administered or the concentration of the drug administered will be equal to the concentration of drug in the systemic circulation will be equal to the concentration of drug eliminated out from the body. That's what God we call it as the steady state concentration. And how we will achieve the steady state concentration? We will achieve the steady state concentration after four to five half lives. And when we administer the other dose of a drug at the interval or the duration of the plasma half life, if we don't administer the second dose or the third or fourth or fifth dose, at the duration of the or the interval of the plasma half-life of that drug, we will never ever achieve the steady state concentration. And if we couldn't achieve the steady state concentration, the drug will not be able to produce the constant effects. So for the constant effects of the drug, steady state concentration is must. So how will we achieve the steady state concentration and what is the steady state concentration? Suppose uh, we have uh, administered the 10 milligram 
of the drug through intravenous route of administration and it reaches to the systemic circulation 10 milligrams after the first half life it reaches to the 50 percent that is the 5 milligrams so as per rule if we want to achieve the steady state concentration we have to administer the second dose at that interval so if we administer the another dose of 10 milligram at that interval or the first half life then what happens that this plasma concentration will reaches to the 15 milligrams and after the second half life it goes down to half that is 7.5 milligrams again we have to administer the another dose at the second plasma half life so if we administer the 10 milligrams of the drug then the plasma concentration will be 17.5 milligrams again after the third half life it goes down to the half that is 8.75 milligrams and as per rule we have to administer the another dose of 10 milligrams so we will achieve the concentration of the drug by 18.75 milligrams so this is the fluctuations still uh, we are on the way to achieve the steady state concentration these are the fluctuations that is the maximum concentration and then it goes down then again it goes up and then down so there is the ups and downs not only in the concentration but in the systemic effects of the drug when it reaches to the this level of the drug then again it goes down to 9.5 milligrams that is equal to 10 milligrams now we have to administer the another dose at this of life interval and it reaches to 19.5 milligram that is equal to 20 milligrams and then it goes down to 10 we have to administer the another dose and then we will achieve the 20 milligrams it goes down to the 10 so this is the point where we achieve the steady state concentration this is called the peak and this is called the trough that is peak is 20 milligram and the trough is 10 milligram when the concentration reaches at 10 milligrams it means 10 milligrams of the drug remains in the systemic circulation 10 milligrams of the drug is excreted or eliminated out from the body and at this half life level we have to administer another 10 milligram of the drug so we can say that the drug now achieves the steady state concentration because the drug concentration administered that is a 10 milligram will be equal to drug concentration eliminated that is a 10 milligram and the drug concentration remains in the system with circulation is the 10 milligram so we can say that now we have achieved the steady state concentration this is very important but for some drugs which have a very long steady state concentration like a digoxin it has a 168 hours half life so in this situation we could not wait for that much prolonged time to achieve the steady state concentration and have to wait for the drug to produce the constant effects in such situation we have to go for the loading dose that we go for the loading dose that is how much dose we want to achieve or what is the desired plasma steady state concentration so this is the loading dose which is uh, equal to volume of distribution and multiplied by the desired plasma steady state concentration how much concentration of the drug is desired at the steady state level and is divided by the bioavailability 
So these are two, again two predictors, clinical predictors. One is the volume of distribution. If the drug has the wider volume of distribution, the loading dose must be very much higher. And if the volume of distribution is narrower, the smaller loading dose is required. In case of bioavailability, the situation is total reverse. If the bioavailability of a drug is more, the less loading dose is required. And if the bioavailability of the drug is less, then more loading dose is required. So we have to calculate the loading dose on the basis of desired plasma steady state concentration and on the basis of the uh, plasma half-life. So that loading dose, we will calculate the loading dose that will be followed by the maintenance dose in case of those drugs who have very large plasma half-life. So these are all the clinical importances of the plasma half-life that is uh, on the top is the uh, to design the dosage regimen and to achieve the steady state concentration and we should know that what is the plasma half-life of a drug and how much time is required to achieve the steady state concentration. If the time is very much prolonged, then we have to decide for the loading dose followed by the maintenance dose. So these are all the clinical implications and clinical importance of this plasma half-life. Thank you very much.